What's up, everybody, and welcome to this episode of our athlete interview series presented by USANA. I'm your host, Jason Nacy. Today's guest is a six time Olympic medalist. He's won a total of 33 medals in major international competition and set an Olympic record in the 100 meter backstroke at the 2012 Olympics. Please welcome Matt Grievers. What's up, Matt? That was fun, by the way, seeing, uh, watching, watching you in Omaha. Yeah, I'm glad you you made it there. Yeah, it's it's a grinder, isn't it? That me, I mean, you've seen it in different sports. Like, still, your wrestling story is mind blowing to me. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's it's man, you see a lot of uh, awesome emotions, and then you see like such severe sadness. Oh. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a brutal, it's a brutal, but it's kind of the dr- the drama of it is addicting like I was yeah. sitting there in the stands later on and I was watching 15 year olds like I just made the Olympics and then you watch someone else like uh, <laughs> yeah it's crazy yeah it it's incredible um yeah. and like you said I I had a handful of moments where I felt really bad and I didn't even know the athlete I'd never even heard of the athlete right and I still like my heart went out to him because I'm because there, there was so many, you know, they, they just take the, the top two, right? And there yeah. was so many where three, four were separated by like hundreds of a second. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's like, that's yeah. like minimal. I mean, it's literally Fingers like, out. oh, maybe <laughs> somebody had a longer finger now and yeah. got to it that much quicker. Um, but I mean, obviously, I know it's more than a fingernail, or everybody would be growing their fingernails out. But, uh, but yeah. you know, that's what it seems like in perspective. Sure. If you're just thinking about like how close that distance is, and you're thinking those guys who have never made it to an Olympics and they missed it by a tenth or something, and you're just like, oh my gosh, because I mean, it 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 changes your life, right? I mean, being an Olympian, that's and and not being Olympian by that by that small amount, I mean that that's that's life changing, and that's why for me seeing so many of those where I was just like, oh, oh my gosh, that's so I feel so bad. <laughs> and you're right, it's the ones that well are like the older ones that hadn't made it yet. There's some people that have gotten third like three different trials <sighs> for twelve years going for it, and they get third all three times. Like those stories are yeah. That hurts. Yeah. <laughs> that, one, that one hurts. But I mean, you have a pretty amazing story. Six six Olympic medals, four gold. Um, one. Well, I'm just going to jump right into the questions because one yeah, of the questions it. was uh, was what's your favorite Olympic memory? Oof. Um, do you want swim related, sport related, or just the Olympics? Just yours, whatever like you feel like is 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 your favorite Olympic moment. So. There's some some cool stories. Some in the cafeteria with the NBA players that were were super cool because as a swimmer, I mean we're we're pretty big every once in a while every four years, but um, to to be with like LeBron James and Kobe at a lunch or a dinner in the village was amazing. Uh, just to hang out with them, I'd say my favorite moment was the. 400 medley relay in 2012 and Michael Phelps was supposedly retiring afterwards and I led that off um at a great race our whole all four of us swam swam great we we won the Olympic gold and this is going to be Michael Phelps's last gold medal ever and I was like you know I can say that forever like I share the same one yeah Um, I can say that to my kids and grandkids down the road like hey this is so cool and then he he came out of retirement and won some more without me but uh <laughs> it was so cool to be up there with guys that some of my best friends and uh guys i look up to and it was just amazing to be kind of a part of that relay and the foreign medley is a very strong u.s relay so kind of uphold the tradition there amazing and then we walked around with um well it's the last really the last event of the meet so we kind of got all the glory, like for all the events, kind of all the, the cheers and praise yeah. kind of represented Team USA as we walked the deck together. And I think that was really cool, walking the deck, joking around with Brendan Hansen, Nathan Adrian and Michael Phelps, and just like looking at people. I don't know, it's just, 
you're in a little bubble, but you're in front of everyone with all these cameras and and uh, photos going on. So it's just really cool to be part of that. Something I won't forget, just kind of being you know, the best in the world with the best in the world, representing the best in the world, and uh, and just getting to live that moment. It's awesome. So correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you break an Olympic record in the uh, 100 meter backstroke at that Olympics as well? Yeah. And, and the individual was cool, but it was stressful. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. um, a lot of pressure. I was expected to win and, and I wanted to really badly, but it was um, the relay. There's pressure too, but you're, you're with your buddies and it's just yeah. like more adrenaline, just more um, like a game, like a team game where the individual, it, it was awesome and I, and I liked it, but it had a different feel to it. It wasn't as pure enjoyment um, as the relay was. So yeah, I got to swim. Yeah. Well, both times, but yeah, the relay is, you probably highlight something I remember a little more, a little more vividly. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Um, next question. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, because I got so many questions yeah. and yeah. some of them are, 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 are funny to, to be honest with you. Um, some I'm not going to ask. There's people yeah. who wanted you to, to flex, um, to, to make your pecs move. Uh, somebody <laughs> even asked you to marry them. Like it, it, it was pretty funny to be honest right. with you all, all the different. So with all that said, um, and all the serious questions I got there still, I don't even think we'll be able to get to all of them, but, um, all right, I'll go shorter. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. That let's, um, I'd rather have an awesome conversation than just try to hammer through a bunch of, a bunch of, uh, questions but uh so some of these will be pretty easy like a lot of people were interested to know how tall you are and what your shoe size is i am six eight and my shoe size is 16 and i'm it didn't surprise me that we got those questions because when i was with you in tucson a handful of weeks ago i asked the same thing i asked the shoe size <laughs> That's and they a, help their fins. My yes. daughter swims around right now in the pool and she has fins and it truly looks like she has actual fins on her feet. They're so big because she's still growing into them. Yeah. And it's, it, she's a little fish. It's funny. They definitely help. So is it pretty fun watching your daughter um, in the swimming pool? Do you, do you want her to, to swim competitively or? I would love for my, my daughters to swim competitively. Well, I'll let them make that decision. Yeah. Um, I know it's not for everyone. They, some people find a thrill in the race because it's not a game. It's, it is, it's a race. It's a different amount of pressure and stress and that some people love that, love that they're responsible for their own actions. They don't have to rely on teammates and swimming is super nice. It's not subjective. So you yeah. just have to worry about the clock and don't have to worry about getting gypped later on. Um, so I think there's a lot of wonderful things about this sport great exercise but there is um i know that the, the pressure of racing gets to some athletes and they're kind of too far into it to, to kind of switch it up yeah. but i think i'm going to try to recognize that in my girls if they're excited about the race or if they're just terrified like if they can't eat before a summer league swim meet, i'm like well maybe we should try volleyball out. <laughs> <laughs> because because you know like some people love the training of it and working out but when it comes to the big meet um, it's, it's, it is, it's all you, it's all, it's all up to you and how you execute your race plan to what you eat and how you sleep that night. So it's, it's all, uh, yeah, on your shoulders, which, yeah, again, I, I like that. And I know some people don't, so we'll see what they like. So did you thrive with the pressure or were you just able to manage it? I got through both. Uh, I, I mostly thrived under the pressure. I enjoyed the the moments like i made it bigger than it really was a lot of times even when i was a kid i like imagine like everyone was watching me and it yeah. was the biggest deal everyone's talking about it but no it's like it's 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 obviously your world is so much smaller uh than it, than it really is but i like that and then there's points where i realized i wasn't eating that much because i was so nervous or and i always had to go to the bathroom really bad behind the blocks that was it was like too much yeah so i kind of scaled it back and made that nervousness into excitement because 
it is it's the same feelings your body's doing the same stuff it's just a mindset of yep. oh i'm feeling this way because i'm excited or i'm feeling this way because i'm nervous and i think i was able to actually convince myself of that excitement of it and i and i really have been so um some some meets are just too big though that you can't uh fully like you understand the gravity of it and it is it can be life-changing and it's it's so crazy that a race can come down to hundreds of a second and completely change your life um and that some people love that you know it's gambling or it's yeah and you're gambling on yourself and your hard work and and the life choices you made to get there and uh that's that can be really great or that can, again be really stressful yeah um here's here's a great question and i'm assuming it comes from one of your friends uh, his name's matt and i think he's a diver <laughs> so so his question is are all divers more athletic than swimmers <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. So they look more athletic. They're, I know all divers are shorter than. No. <laughs> That's Matt Pasorti. Yeah, he, uh, he he was a diver, and uh, I think I'm more athletic than him. So point point proven right there. That, <laughs> that's not true. The divers are man. They're they are athletes. Like gymnasts, when you think of athleticism, like they're and divers and gymnasts have a lot of similarities. They're just so much body control. It's really amazing. Um, Thing of diving is subjective. Oof, yeah, it's hard for me. Oh yeah, I've I've had this conversation with uh, with a good buddy of mine, Alex Ferreira, because uh, he he does the free ski half pipe, and you know it comes down to those moments where you give it everything that you've got, and you know everybody watching might think that you won, but it's just up to those judges and how they view it, and it's really hard to take the emotion out of it. Right. If you right. If, if, if there's stories behind it and you've got somebody who um, wrecked their first two runs and on their third run lands it that, you know, that builds up a little more emotion. And maybe, you know, a, a, a judge could think, oh, that that was a little more spectacular, or whatever. So, right. yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking of him when when you we're talking about how you're just against the clock. You don't have to worry yeah. about the judges and, and all that. So that, that is nice about your sport, but at the same time, man, that clock, that clock can be vicious. You have no one else to blame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so real quick, how did you get into swimming? You come from a, from a swimming family, don't you? Yeah, my mom was a swim coach. My dad played water polo. My older brother and sister both swam. So the, the car was going to the pool and uh, <laughs> I was in the car. So it was it started out loving it. And then I want to be, you don't talk that much. And I was really social when I was younger. Your, yeah. your head's in the water. So I was like, hey, I'm not yeah. hanging out. Like, sure, I'm right next to my friend in the water, but I get yelled at every time I talk, they say to listen or put your head down or, yeah. Uh, so, and then I, then I really kind of found my, my love for it again, later on when it was really up to me to swim instead of just the car going there Yeah. when it was my, my choice, I really bought in fully. And uh, yeah, I, I really like it now, but I think also I was naturally better at it. Just having those big feet and being tall and, uh, being in the water so much when I was younger that I liked being good at things. And so yeah. soccer was fun. Basketball was fun. I did some track and field, volleyball, water polo, but I was definitely the best at swimming. So that's, <laughs> that's probably the main reason why I, I stuck with it because yeah. I enjoyed all the sports and I really like game sports. Um, but I probably would have lost a lot of friends if I did that because I was the kid that was more like, like, don't you remember the play? <laughs> <laughs> How did you miss that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was really aggressive. <laughs> well, that's a perfect segue into my next question. Cause I'm always curious when I talk to athletes, if, if you weren't swimming at the elite level, uh, and, and, and you could be a, a pro at any other sport, what sport would you pick? Golf. Golf. Okay. Golf. I like golf. I think it brings you to incredible places and you can do it. I, I'm getting too old for swimming. I'm it's my technique is there, my work ethics there, my body just has a hard time recovering the same way it used to. Yeah. Golf, you don't have to worry about that. You have it's all about 
sure, you can probably lose some power, but you make up for it in skill. And I've said this before, I think if I could have my brain now and my body 10 years ago, that would be amazing. (laughs) (laughs) But you get to keep your brain and your body really doesn't uh, deteriorate in golf. You don't need as much. Yeah. um, You don't work out as hard. You don't need to recover as much. It's not such a limiting factor. So I think golf and the money's great. And uh, like, yeah, I mean, you do it forever. It's, it just seems fun. Obviously there's pressure involved too, but it is a game and it's a game that you only have to work on for yourself. Like tennis, like is another, like it's a game, unless you're doing doubles, you're really just relying on yeah. yourself. And uh, I like both of those aspects. I like not worrying about uh, my, my teammates or, keeping like that sounds fun and all and i like realize but um i like being the one in full control yeah and then and then making a game out of it so golf for me but tennis is, is there too yeah well and i gotta go back to something you were talking about earlier because i knew nothing about water polo and i watched a match went to, i don't know if it was during the olympics or how i caught it but i was so intrigued and I thought to myself, that looks like one of the hardest sports in the world. Like, I I didn't realize how deep the pool was. Everybody's pulling on each other. I mean, that's 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 a crazy sport. It's similar to soccer where people don't realize how much they run. Like when when someone tallies it up at the end, they're like, yeah, they just ran 10 miles (laughs) or whatever at the end (laughs) of a game. And like, wow, I guess they really were going back and forth a lot. Um, and water polo is the same way you're treading water constantly you don't have a wall or or a, a floor or bottom to kind of go off of very often so yeah and it's a little kind of wrestling it's half wrestling half or a little bit of wrestling a little bit of swimming and a little bit of uh shooting and, and skill but those guys are strong like yeah. i'm i'm a pretty big dude and those guys they're my height but they're just wider they're <laughs> they're massive it's um, it, it's hard to imagine anybody wider than you. I mean, <laughs> just seeing you in person, your shoulders are so broad and, but you're so chiseled too. I, I think that's why we got so many, uh, so many questions about, <laughs> Oh, have him take his shirt off. Oh, have him flex his pecs. <laughs> <laughs> Good. No, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that my body's been able to, to do pretty well <laughs> it stayed with me pretty well in my older age yeah well yeah, those water polo guys are they're strong they're super strong and 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 that's the other thing i gotta give you kudos for is your your age i mean i i don't want it to come across that you're old because you're definitely not but you were hanging in there and and, and winning races at a much older age than than is typical in swimming am, am i right yeah yeah, or kind of my generation. I'm, I'm the same age as Michael Phelps, Ryan Lockby, Colin Jones, and um, Colin kind of retired a little while ago. But Ryan, uh, he was still going. It's like we were pretty good young, so we're yeah. kind of on the teams, doing well at a really young age, and we just all loved it and never wanted to retire or quit. And we were good enough where we couldn't kind of the younger generations couldn't kick us out for a while. <laughs> and so we, uh, we stayed up until this trials and yeah, so 36 is very old for swimming. Um, but I think it's, the number is going to keep going up as long as there's more ways to make a living off it. If you can support a family yeah. and swim, I think that's kind of was the limiting factor why people had to retire is if you didn't score some pretty big sponsorships, um, you weren't, you weren't able to sustain yeah really even for yourself (laughs) as a swimmer but there's more opportunities now for sure and um that's i think going to push the age limit older and older as long as there keeps increasing more opportunities there's a new swim league out now called international swim league and that's giving uh, a base salary and it's starting out low but is there's more spectators more people get involved and watch that could be huge actually because swimming is really mainly sponsorships there's yep. some support from um the usopc 
and USA Swimming, but really to do that, you, you pretty much have to be an Olympian or the top two in your race in the country and top eight in the world, um, which luckily I, I was able to do that for, for a long time. But um, yeah, as soon as you're out, then you kind of have to retire <laughs> Not re- or you find something else yeah. uh, to make money. Yeah. Um, here's another great question. Do you have a favorite pair of swim goggles? We've had this I, conversation, so I know you do. <laughs> I do. Yeah. The magic five. Um, I like the really dark ones. So, um, they're tinted and they're mirror finished. And I like that. You can't see my eyes. Um, and, and they, they fit great. They have, they're like solid through the sides. So if you put your swim cap on, like what I didn't like before, if I put my swim cap cap on the rubber, like it got really loose here. So my yeah. goggles still leaked or fell off. And they kind of made a smart design where it's it's solid. Um, so they're, yeah, they're comfortable. They're one, I can wear them in all the strokes. And and really importantly for me in Arizona, I don't have the raccoon eyes so badly right now, but uh, you know, I'm having them dark. So yeah. I can actually swim in the sun and not be blinded. Um, but they're they've been great. So yeah, the Magic 5, it's really neat. They're custom goggles. So you download an app on your phone and you scan your face and they do they make the the gaskets and the nose piece and everything to you so there's no adjusting or fiddling or it doesn't stretch um so you have to kind of adjust it like tuning a guitar like you don't yeah. have to re, retune your goggles they're just the way they are for you so yeah. you can't really share with the, like, your friends or brother and sister because they're just your face yeah but for your face they fit perfectly so I, for me they're they're awesome and let's let's be honest nobody nobody shares goggles unless <laughs> unless, unless you're a kid Right. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I don't know if I told you this. So I did a full Ironman and a handful of half Ironmans. So obviously yeah. I had to learn to swim. Um, and, you know, the goggles were one thing that was just always annoying. It's just it was always because because if, if you especially in the open water, um, if it leaks and I would assume especially in like a major competition, like an Olympic trial, you don't want anything to go wrong at all. I mean, Michael Phelps has one of those stories, his goggles completely leaked in the 200 fly. And they're so blurry because it's actually worse when you have goggles and they leak, you really can't see anything where like, it's just the pool. You can kind of open them and peek. So he's like blinded. And he had to count his strokes. I think it's pretty incredible. So he knew where the wall was based on how many strokes he did. And I might be able to do that for backstroke, but I'd be freaking out. Like yeah. I would not be okay. Cause I'd flip. And then if you don't, <laughs> there's no wall there, your feet just whip <laughs> and then you're done. It's yeah. all your dispute. Um, so yeah, big, really big to not leak to, to see where the flags are, or the wall is and not, smash your face so yeah pretty pretty big deal but open water like you said like for some people it's even hard just to kind of re-fix them yeah. while you're going but at least there you can we're in a race at 51 yeah. seconds if you stop for a second oh, yeah it's over yeah yeah and those those magic five goggles look awesome too yeah i think i think they're great yeah i i really like them i i liked them so much that i actually invested i'm an investor in the company now oh, nice yeah yeah nice. i think they uh hit all the boxes for me and I, I thought other people would like them too. So I, I'm trying to be involved. So thank you for o- allowing me to yeah. kind of plug them a little bit here. That's no, great. Absolutely. And I, and I got to say, that's a, uh, that, that's a big deal. If you've got an athlete who likes a product so much that they want to invest in the company, that says, that says a lot for the product. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I think so too. Well, thanks. Yeah. They're, they're great. They're great. Um, so I got to tell you, when I when when I was learning to swim and I never got really good, I just you know that was a discipline and a discipline I had to work on, right? But it was never my best discipline. But there got there 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 was a time where I felt like oh man, like I'm I'm just gliding on the top. I probably look amazing. Everybody's probably looking at me thinking, how is this dude so good? And then, so I was like, I'm going to take my GoPro because I just want to look, I was so confident in, 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 in my technique that I was like, yeah, I just, I want to record this and I want to show everybody. 
Dude, when I took it back and started watching it, I was like this. I was like plowing through the water. It's crazy how you can feel like, you know, you're 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 doing so well, but you're so off the mark. That's what's so crazy about swimming. It's so hard. Yeah. I mean, it's just like anything. I I and I actually look at film all the time um because really what you feel, you form this muscle memory or people call habits and mm-hmm. You're like, no, I made this adjustment. Like I was, I was entering, crossing over, and now I'm over my shoulder and in a good pull pattern position. But you swam so many strokes like this. And even if you're not, but you're just getting into it, you think that you're here, but really you were here and now you're here. Like still bad. Like this is where you need to be. But in your mind, like you made an adjustment. But yeah, because of the muscle memory adjustment of this big is going to feel like you're going to feel like yeah. you're swimming out here to actually on video to be in the right place and i'm always fascinated by that too um i've kind of dialed in at the very end of my career but in even in college i was like what like i thought i looked way better than that um i think swimming is one of those in the water just kind of throws you for a loop so this is a perfect segue into the in, into another question um, any tips on how to become better at the backstroke? Great. Uh, backstroke tips, use your core. Um, so for me, I got to, fl- it's easier to say flex your abs, but yeah. really engage your core. So an engage your core, I do like a, it's like a mini flex and it's, you want to make sure that your hips, um, are kind of tucked under you. So it's not like your back's flat and your butt kind of sticks out. You got to make sure your butt is perfectly flat with your back and that's kind of the right position and then you can use your core as leverage so as soon as my hand enters I engage my core and now I'm using my my lats my core my stomach to pull through so as I'm pulling my arm my body is turning and so I'm not just using my arm strength I'm using my whole body to pull my arm and that gives you a lot more endurance and backstroke power speed because you're, again, you're not just doing this, you're doing everything and yeah. it, it allows your hips to be involved. And, uh, and then, so you want to throw your arm in and that kind of helps with body position as well, getting the hips engaged. So throw in and pull through, um, and a small, small kick. So if you're really big, actually, you got to think of yourself like in a tube, um, hydrodynamic tube. And as soon as you're your kick kind of goes out of that too. It might be more resistance than the energy is mm. worth for that kick. So maybe yeah. you're going faster for a second, but if you're out of the tube, just a little too much, um, it probably is, isn't working for you. So you want to be streamlined. And, yeah. And then race strategy. I think everyone learns the hard way, but you got to really control your kick in the beginning. And what I mean is dial it down, make sure, because as soon as your kick fades and backstroke, it, it hurts so much more and you go so much slower. Kind of like you were saying on, you feel like you're like this, but all of a sudden you're yeah. dragging your legs in the water and backstroke. You have so much, you, you get to breathe as much as you want. So you have all this oxygen and your legs just want to eat it up. Your leg muscles just want to eat all the oxygen. So you kind of overdo it or freestyle. You're holding your breath more and it's kind of self-managed. Um, so I say those are my biggest tips. Uh, and the easiest one is enter wider than your shoulder don't enter over your head as soon as you enter over your head the first thing you do to pull is actually just moving your body and i was talking about the cylinder and the line so i'm pushing myself out of the cylinder line and not really even going forward until i'm getting here and then i'm finally pushing myself forward through the pool so you're kind of almost ruining your body position if you overextend past the midline and that's uh i say that's your your key stuff so do you work on flex your, your, your shoulder flexibility. And I look work at this point. Um, I do shoulder strengthening exercises, not flexibility. I have so many tears in my labrum, Mm. um, where if I not, and it's not bad, it's, it's gains me this flexibility where I can be in a super streamlined position. And, and that's, and I still have strength there because my labrums are huge. Yeah. <laughs> I just have strengthened them through sh- shoulder exercise and swimming through all the years that if you do um, an ultrasound, you'll see tears where normal people, <laughs> they wouldn't be able to use their arms. But for me, since my, le- my, 
labor is that much larger, it's, it's just yeah. allowing me some flexibility. So you don't really want to try to tear, make tears. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I do work on other flexibility in my hips and kind of doing dynamic warmups or yoga. It's more for my back. Uh, you want kind of hyper mobility in your lower back for underwaters. And that's another great tip for backstroke is, is getting better at underwaters because the fastest you're going in the pool is either off the start or off the turn. And so if you have a higher momentum, as soon as you have more speed off that start and turn from those underwaters, everyone starts at the, the speed right after that and they only get slower throughout the, the momentum fades. So the higher speed you end up, the, the, at the very end of the pool, that momentum point is still what you did faster here. You fade at the same rate, let's say mm -hmm. it's still going to be faster here. So the most speed you have. So that's why you see someone like Caleb Dressel have an amazing start and so much speed. He's going to slow down a little faster just because of friction, yeah. the resistance, but he still maintaining that momentum longer because of his initial higher speed. And that's one of the reasons why underwaters are so important. Yes. For that, distance of speed 15 meters is the max you can go so you might be 0.2 seconds faster on that 15 meters but that 0.2 seconds lasts longer than just that 15 meters it lasts throughout the lap so i'm getting very technical there for people <laughs> that are very excited about <laughs> swimming fast um, and it's a hard concept to really grasp unless you're at the highest speed because right yeah. little kids create momentum all the time but at Olympic trials, you don't see people creating momentum in the middle of the pool. It's either off the start or off the turn. Gotcha. Man, it's fascinating. I had, I, I had no idea. And, you know, it's, it, it, it's crazy, like every sport, how technical it is. Um, and, the, and the other thing that I talk about a lot with, with athletes is you guys make your sport look so easy. I mean, when, when, when you're swimming, when we were out in Tucson a hand, handful of weeks ago, and I'm watching you, I'm thinking, I mean, I've swam, so I know this isn't true, but it looks like effortless. It's like, oh man, it's, it literally looked like you could go all day long just because you were so smooth and, 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 and you made it look so easy. Oh. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, and I can, I can actually swim probably longer than I could run. Like I've gotten more efficient at swimming and I'm not that good at running uh, anymore. So it's uh, yeah, I think swimmers have, I'm worse in the water all the time. It's you've adapted to it and, and find it's such subtle things to make you float, right? It's just like a, a shift of the fingers or uh, holding more air in your lungs, like a little trick. You, wow. I mean, you float a little higher and you don't exhale it all the way because then you'll sink too far. And you don't, people wouldn't think about that until you naturally do it when you're at the highest level because you spend so much time in the water. Like, hey, yeah. like being a little, little higher is so much easier. So you just always keep a little air in your lungs. Um, and I bet you people out there that are good swimmers would hear that and they're like, I don't know if I do that. I bet you do. Yeah. Like you don't even realize it. Little, little tricks like that. And we're just, you know, what I was talking about core engagement, you do it naturally, but you, if you're all wiggly, you know, you're using so much water snaking or so much energy snaking through the pool where if you go super easy, but you're doing it all forward. Yeah. Then it, you can, I probably could do it all day at like at a certain speed. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's insane. That's stuff that I would have never thought about. And what was always frustrating to me going to the pool is, you know, I was in the best shape of my life because I was, I was, I was training for a full Ironman, right? So I was on the bike a ton running and swimming and I'd go to the pool and it was just so much work for me. And then I'd see an overlay overweight elderly woman who was just like, swimming faster than me but didn't even look like she was trying and it used to get, it used to get so frustrating but um but but hey we're not all super athletes i guess yeah. well some some people just float so well yeah depending on their body composition that really it's like a like a boat you know you're just paddling a little bit and you get to just get some uh, momentum there you <laughs> that I'm talking about that makes me feel a little better yeah. thank you <laughs> yeah. yeah if you're really in shape you're probably dense if you know how much body fat on you you're gonna sink like a brick especially if you're not 
uh, kind of keeping some air in your lungs. So maybe yeah. now that you know that trick a little bit, you can float along a little better. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll go pro now. <laughs> just yes. Kidding. Yes. I mean, if you're just finishing the Iron Man, it's very impressive. So, uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Um, look, I don't want to take up too much time. There's a handful of questions that, that I want to get to. Uh, a couple of USANA questions. Um, how how did you hear about USANA? How, what, what made you get involved with, uh, with USANA? I've taken USANA products for a very long time. And my wife, uh, she grew up taking them. And her parents have taken them. We dated a long time before we got married. Yeah. So I've been with her since end of 2007, kind of 2008. And we had USANA in the house that entire time. Um, Cause I kind of got off uh, any sort of supplementary yeah. um, just cause I was so nervous yeah. for a while about what I put in my body and, and swimming has a lot of pretty strict rules that if you test for anything that you are not exactly sure. Yeah. So now that like USANA, I've done more research, I have more knowledge and I know that they test their products and it's something I can be confident in that I'm, I'm going to be clean with. I mean, wh- how could I not um, take every advantage I could for my body to perform? And at an older age, I need every advantage. And some, some of the things I, I know I'm not supposed to say like miraculous be yeah. that's kind of a dangerous concept but I was cramping almost every day and when I kind of fully committed to USANA products I stopped cramping wow um, completely so and I was taking a lot of um, electrolytes taking salt tabs early on and and it wasn't enough so kind of the full scale doing the athlete pack for me it was huge, truly uh, wow. just game changing where I wasn't worried about it. Cause even if I didn't cramp worrying about cramping yep. was not allowing me to fully focus. Cause it was whenever I did something fully ex- when it, explosive, if I went a hundred percent, it was going to cramp. So I had to dial everything down and that just doesn't feel good <laughs> to, yeah. to not be going full steam when it's a time to go full steam. So again, yeah, my, my in-laws, um, I grew up with it. Some of them too. Um, some of the products and, and then I know some friends got involved. Um, and now USANA has more than supplements. They have awesome skincare products. Got to make this stay, stay young. Um, and there's just, yeah, a lot of great products. Yeah, I even, yeah, I got stickers recently for my daughters <laughs> nice. from there. So it's, it's, it's a lot of great things and it's the style I want. It's something I want to kind of take these type of products and I don't want to worry about, um, you know, testing positive for a, uh, a bad sub or a bad product that I'm not supposed to be taking. Yeah. Which is, it's just nice to have that peace of mind. Yeah. Um, I was having a conversation with our mutual friend, Ian, and he was telling me how you've got the ordering down to a science <laughs> now. So oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I get a little bit of a, yeah, a, a coupon code stipend and I'm, I'm usually within the dollar. Every time. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite USANA product? Right now it's the uh, watermelon electrolyte mix. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, it was, it was, <laughs> it was in this, my daughter, this is, I kind of use their smaller cup here today, but uh, <laughs> we went to the zoo and I was sweating and <laughs> losing. So I was like, Oh, this is perfect. And it's, It tastes good and um, definitely feel hydrated again. One of the cool things, but not cool, when you're kind of an elite athlete, your body tells you a lot. Like I, if I'm achy, like I kind of understand what it's mad at. And today I could feel I was dehydrating. Yeah. Like, and so I needed to hydrate and that was the best way. So it's, it's a good product. Tastes good. So easy to use. I mean, they're, they're individual packets. So you don't have to kind of scoop it out. You can keep some in your pocket or your bag. So you always have something on you. Uh, I take it right before at trials. I was, I was taking it right before my race just to kind of make sure I wasn't going to cramp again. And yeah, it's it's good. Nice. I love the cup by the way. Yeah. (laughs) And nubby. (laughs) Yeah. There's still a little in there. Nice. Nice. All right. Two questions and, uh, and I'll let you get going. Um, the first question is, was there ever a time that you felt like you wanted to quit? Yes. Lots of times. 
I think that's – and if someone – I'd be very surprised to find someone that honestly never did. It's – um, I think it's like anything in sport. You have your ups and downs. Um, one second you're on top of the world, and it's the greatest sport you've ever done, and you can imagine your life without it. And other times you could imagine your life without it very easily <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and look forward to that. So it, it hasn't been recently. I've loved swimming recently as an adult. It's, it's everything I want. It's an escape from noise. It's a great exercise. It's something I'm good at. It's something I'm trying to be the best at. And, and um, even though recently I didn't make it to Olympics from trials, I still got six, one of the best in the world. And that feels really good. I'm not going to have much, any other option really in existence and that I can say that about. Yeah. Um, and, and that's pretty cool for me personally. But when I was younger, you see your friends doing more play dates or sleepovers yep. and eating a lot of candy and stuff that, uh, and so it's time consuming. You, you go every day after school, pretty early on, you go before school and after school. Yeah. And I felt tired and I was like, man, I kind of just want to be a kid and just hang out. And then I do that for a little bit. I was like, man, I like the lifestyle that swimming kind of makes you commit to. Yeah. It's that awesome, clean living, living on an endorphin rush all the time, feeling so healthy and strong and clean because you're in the water all the time. Uh, I don't mind sweating, but sweating in the water is to me much better than sweating on land. Yeah. Um, and I kind of found that out all through different stages of my my swimming career but i'd say the most is when i was younger definitely like 12 to 14 where kids start hanging out more and and um i've i don't want to call them sacrifices that i've made for swimming because they're not it's just the lifestyle choices i made and and now looking back on i'm like man i probably got so many i got better grades i got into northwestern a great school um i all because of swimming and the lifestyle it promoted and ate healthier and probably going to live longer. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's so many great benefits that you can look back on now and the actual racing I like, but I do understand when kids feel that anxiety and it doesn't feel good. And it's a big time commitment. And um, other things are, are more fun a lot of times, yeah. but not as rewarding. And it doesn't have a lasting rewarding effect. It doesn't feel like you've accomplished as maybe maybe it doesn't feel like you've accomplished as much so for me uh i've wanted to quit but man am i happy i did well um, no, no regrets at all and, and and i feel like the the point to that is um yes it's super rewarding where where you got but that was a long-term uh reward versus the short term, right? Of eating the candy, doing that, doing that, whatever. Um, and the reason why I like asking that question is because I, I'm, I'm, I'm really into mindset and I feel like, you know, your mind can take you where your, your body can't, right? Yeah. In sport, in, in anything. And uh, again, the reason why I like to ask that question is because I think people think it's so easy for a guy like you, oh, he's tall, he's fit, He's, he's got um, big feet that help. He's got everything that helps him to, to, to be this elite athlete. But the reality is there's thousands of people with the exact same body type that you have that didn't make it because they didn't have the kind of discipline and, and the, the, the will to, to keep going. And, and to me, I think that's what sets an elite athlete uh, a part or an entrepreneur who's successful versus one who's not, um, or, or just anybody in life being more successful versus not is just, you know, the attitude that you have, like, look, I know it's a sacrifice, but I see the long, the long-term reward. That's what I'm going for. And that's more important than, you know, whatever it was at the time, like hanging out, sleepovers, uh, candy, you know, all those things that, that, that you feel like you, you miss at the time. Absolutely. Yep. And I think it, it could have been for me, at least so close either way. Um, as yeah. in, as soon as you, you don't, if you commit to it once and yes, it's long-term, but not, doesn't even have to be that long-term and you feel the reward 
and it doesn't even have to be success, yeah. but just the journey of it. And you feel the healthy lifestyle. And then you're like, man, that was good. It's so hard to, like you just said, it's so hard to not have that instant satisfaction or gratification. But, and, and for me, if I didn't like really give it a shot, obviously the other way can seem super appealing. So you're right. It's, um, it, it, but as soon as you get there, I think that's a trait, hopefully, that care, for, for me in sport, I'll carry on into whatever my next career will be, just saying, hey, I don't need to do this. I yeah. just keep going on the course and I think it, it will pay off and, and pretty, it's just good, good life skill to, to figure out. So if you're thinking about quitting, <laughs> uh, you know, I would say even put more into it. Don't even ease back, like fully commit to it. So instead of kind of half swimming and, or half whatever sport or activity it is, trying to be really good at it. And I, I one of my friends had a, a great quote, I'm not really remembering, but he dismissed um, the team as well, Nathan Adrian, and he just said, you know, I, I loved how fully committed I was to something, and I have no regrets of what that taught me and what that let his body and mindset do to not have worries because you're committed to it. You're not having doubts because you're doing it. You're not curious what activities you're doing. You're, you know, and it's actually a little sense of freedom there when you are fully committed to something that you just, you just kind of put the blinders on and do it and focus on what you're you're focusing on right so i i know some people say take a break or take it easy but i almost would say really try the full commitment on something and and see how you like it because i think for a lot of people you can get that reward or feel that reward even if it's not in the sense of success yeah. or winning but you're going to feel um that good focus yeah earlier and, and, and overcoming, you just, you overcame something. You wanted to quit and you didn't. I, yeah. I, I, I love that. I love putting on the blinders full tilt. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Last question. Um, I really like to ask this at, at, at the end of all these interviews because I always get completely different answers. But is there one thing that, that you do every day whether it's uh, something that takes you 30 seconds or five minutes that has helped you become a better person or a better athlete um, that, that is something for, that is something easy that somebody watching this can, uh, can, can implement in their own life to, uh, to, to become better. Um, I would say breathing, but I bet you that's very common. So I'm going to do the body scan. Um, if I'm feeling and I do this at pretty much every night before I go to bed to help me relax. But sometimes I do other times. It's just um, awareness for me. Uh, so I just kind of close my eyes and I picture just top of my head. I'm not looking for anything, feeling anything wrong. I'm just kind of like mentally doing a scan through my body. And it really calms me down. So I don't know if that's for everyone. Um, I heard it on uh, a headspace. Um program and it kind of stuck with me because it, it let me fall asleep that night when I wasn't it wasn't like relaxing the fingers and yeah that works too and that's nice but it's truly like a, a five ten second just body scan and it lets me wow. focus on something else like I just let my body or my mind wander on that um, so I, I probably do that every day and it's not like a a huge stress reliever if my kids are yelling at me or something it's not like okay hold on i need a body scan it's yeah. more of just uh if i'm feeling overwhelmed mentally or my brain is being a little too jumpy yep. on different thoughts um it helps me kind of come back to just my body and and makes me present so that's huge because i'm i'm a guy that can really focus on the future yeah uh, and sometimes the past and i'm happiest when i'm in my presence so just a present body scan kind of gets my focus narrowed in. I love it. See, that's why I asked that question. I've never heard that one before. So awesome. Yeah, it's, it's hard to describe. It's not, again, not like just kind of think of there's like a light kind of going over you and just being aware of that moment or that, like the nose, the mouth, yeah. but not looking for like, oh, you know, my shoulders hurt. Like that's a red beep. It's just, no, it's just yeah. going through. Wow. Nice. Well, Matt. Thanks so much for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. I know you're super busy, 
Um, you got a lot going on. You got two kids that uh, I'm sure uh, keep your hands full. <laughs> I saw them banging at the door a little bit ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I really appreciate this. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you in the future. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. It was great.